His parents knew him as Marion Robert Morrison, while others know him simply as the Duke. But for the late actor and filmmaker John Wayne's kids, he's simply dad. Wayne became an American icon, starring in dozens of films made in the golden age of Hollywood. His career took off in the silent film era and continued to flourish in the American New Wave movement of the 60s and 70s. In total, he appeared in 179 movies and TV shows. He was one of the top box office draws of his time and frequently appeared alongside other influential and significant Hollywood players. Wayne married three times and had seven children. While his turbulent marriages were certainly sources of frustration, Wayne had bigger fish to fry when it came to his personal troubles. After his death, Wayne's grave remained unmarked for decades, raising quite a few eyebrows. In 2019, a resurfaced 1971 interview in which Wayne made several racist remarks against black people and Native Americans further called into question his legacy. Unable to defend himself from the grave, Wayne's children have been fighting his battles for him in the decades since his passing. Join Facts First as we check in with John Wayne's seven kids and see what they've been doing in recent years to defend their father's name. Michael Wayne Born November 23, 1934, John's first child, Michael Wayne, took over as president and chairman of the John Wayne Foundation following his death. Following in his dad's footsteps, Michael started his movie career working as a production assistant on The Quiet Man. He later joined his father's production company, Batjack Productions, and helped make films like 1960's Alamo and 1963's McClintock. Having a reputation as a savvy businessman, Michael served on the board of the Motion Picture and Television Fund before joining the board of the John Wayne Foundation. He later founded the John Wayne Institute at St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica. Although he worked primarily behind the camera, Michael also occasionally appeared on screen. His final acting role was playing the character Hayden in 1991's The Lost Platoon. He passed away from a heart attack April 2, 2003. Mary Antonia Wayne LaCava Born February 25, 1936 in L.A., LaCava, who went by Tony, was John's first daughter. Like her brother Michael, she made a minor, uncredited appearance in The Quiet Man and another cameo in The Alamo. Tony married Donald LaCava in 1956. She and her husband went on to have eight children. Tony spent the remainder of her life out of the spotlight before passing away December 6, 2000. Patrick Wayne the Duke's second son, Patrick Wayne, was born July 15, 1939. Much like his father, Patrick has enjoyed a prolific acting career, appearing in features like The Searchers and Mr. Roberts. Patrick is especially known for his many roles in sci-fi and adventure films, like The People That Time Forgot and Sinbad and The Eye of the Tiger. Patrick has made more than 40 films, including 11 with his dad. Later on in his career, Patrick hosted the 1980 variety program The Monte Carlo Show and the 1990 reboot of Tic Tac Doe. These days, Patrick has retired from acting and lives in Arizona. Melinda Wayne Munoz While Melinda, like her siblings, made a couple of appearances in films as a child, she didn't end up pursuing an acting career. In 1964, she got married to a man named Gregory Robert Munoz. They had five children together before divorcing in 1985. She currently resides in Newport Beach, California on Balboa Island. Aisa Wayne After appearing in several of her dad's films as a child, Aisa, born March 31, 1956, grew up to be a high-profile attorney in Southern California. According to her bio on her website, she works as a trial attorney and has received training to be a criminal prosecutor for the city of L.A. A lifelong conservative, Aisa publicly endorsed Donald Trump in the Republican primaries during the 2016 election. John Ethan Wayne Better known as Ethan Wayne, this American actor is John's third son. He was born February 22, 1962 and grew up in Newport Beach, California. Ethan's name was chosen in direct relation to his father's character, Ethan Edwards, in 1956's The Searchers. His first appearance in a film was playing the grandson of his dad's character in Big Jake. After John's death in 1979, Ethan started doing stunt work, first appearing in The Blue Brothers. He then resumed work as an actor, appearing in the 1981 films Long Shot and Scream. His later roles included appearances in the TV movie The Alamo, 13 Days to Glory, the CBS soap The Bold and the Beautiful, and 1987's The New Adam 12. 
In 2014, he was featured on History Channel's Pawn Stars as an expert on John Wayne memorabilia. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around for more of John Wayne's kids. Marissa Wayne Marissa was born February 22, 1966 in Burbank. Like her brothers and sisters, she made several cameo appearances in her father's films. Unlike Ethan and Patrick, however, she didn't pursue acting. In 2005, she got married to a man named Tony Ditto. The couple has since had two children together. Wayne's grave location remained a mystery for years. After John Wayne succumbed to stomach cancer in 1979, his funeral was kept very private. John's family didn't want the Duke's farewell ceremony to become a media fiasco, nor did they want his grave to become a pilgrimage site for his fans. Wayne wanted to die with dignity, so they became dedicated to making sure his wishes were upheld as much as possible. John's grave was left unmarked for nearly two decades, and out of respect for his family, the cemetery where he was buried never disclosed his grave's location. But thanks to the internet, we now know the exact location at the Pacific View Memorial Park Cemetery in Corona Del Mar, California. A little bit of net sleuthing will take you there if you're curious. The Duke's kids continue to defend his legacy. John Wayne's memory was tarnished when a 1971 interview with Playboy resurfaced that quoted him as saying he believed in white supremacy. Wayne always said he felt no remorse for the Native Americans who lost their traditional homes. He went as far as to say the Indians were selfishly trying to keep the land that is now the United States for themselves. In her father's defense, Marissa Wayne told Closer Weekly in 2020 that while her father certainly was opinionated, he still respected people if they disagreed with him. She went on to say John had the ability to see both sides of the story. Ultimately, she wanted to emphasize her dad wasn't, as she put it, a right-wing hard-ass. Months after protests erupted at the University of California over Wayne's racist remarks, the college agreed to remove a tribute to the late actor that sat on the facility's grounds. A movement then gained traction to rename John Wayne Airport and remove the Duke statue which can be found out front. Aisa Wayne was also interviewed by Closer. She said that while her father's comments have offended many people, he was, in her eyes, still someone who loved people. She described him as a man who cared for his fellow humans as a people person. Ethan Wayne emphatically told the outlet his father was not a racist. In his statement, Ethan said John was someone who believed everyone deserved an equal opportunity. He further insisted his father would call out bigotry whenever he saw it and hired people of all races, sexual orientations, and nationalities. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think John Wayne really was a racist? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.